And the bed and butters of its call being called by the Dakinis. What it, what happens is, I don't know, maybe my understanding is not perfect, but this is my understanding. And I saw it fucking happen, so I don't know. And I read about it. <coughs> the Dakinis just love your ass. They just have to have you. They, there's no fun if you're not around. And they want you around and they want you to come with them and be with them and then their world is complete and that's the way. And they start calling you and you just, your consciousness is divided between what you're doing in this world and what you're doing with the Dakinis. <laughs> but they're calling you, they're calling you. We want you with us. We want you with us. And I don't know. Then you end up with them, you know. And you're not here anymore. And that's the highest thing that can happen to any being in the Kagyu lineage is to be called by the Dakinis. It's slightly different in Nyingma. In Nyingma, they just wake up one day and become space, essentially. And everybody knows it. What happened to him? He was here yesterday, but now he's space. And everybody knows it. It's just a little different, but similar. Same, but different. Oh, well, you know, but different, you know, variations. Sometimes you, you, you know, there's a story in Tibet. This happened to a lot of people, but this is a recent story. This didn't happen a hundred years ago. This happened, you know, recently. This woman, this is Nyingma style of what this is all about. Uh, this woman comes <clears throat> and says, can I stay in your barn? Old woman, old mendicant hermit wanderer in Tibet. And they say, yeah, you can stay. And she said, no matter what happens, well, no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, do not come into that barn tonight. You just stay in your house and leave, leave it alone. And so uh, during the night, they hear like these lights, you know, and the sounds and all this stuff coming from this bar. It looks like a light show coming on in there. But they had to listen to that woman and said, no, we don't want to mess with this. Just let her be and do what she said. So the next morning they go in there and all that's left is, is some hair and some fingernails and the rest is gone. So what happened to her was uh, she attained rainbow body and she became this body of light. She transformed into space, essentially, but light, light and space. <coughs> <coughs> That's more than Nima style. That's the highest thing that can happen to you. Something like that. But Trung Rinpoche was spending a lot of time with the Dakinis. He'd have a dinner party, but then mainly the Dakinis were at the dinner, mainly sitting to his shrine. was Roger Shogini, that's mainly who he talked to all night long at the dinner party. You know, there might be another girlfriend over here, but. And then he left after doing a lot of that and not talking much. And board with the Dakinis most of the time he left. <clears throat> oh no, we were so blessed. We are so blessed. Everybody in the West is so blessed by what he did bringing in the Dharma. And one of the most important things which nobody understands, nobody gets, Nobody thinks it's a big deal, but me. I'm sure there are some others, but our 
power is so small within the organization and within the it's pathetically small and and we've been undermined. People have robbed. People have robbed us of what Trump Richard gave us, you know. But Steve Seitzik of Dharma Art tried to completely eradicate us and steal the whole thing. I pretty much did. He started this thing called Dharma Art, which was our name, but he stole it. And then he instructs all his people to completely subvert anybody to do with what used to be called Dharma Art, you know. Completely subvert, and they call it Nalanda Gate for a while. They call it Contemplative Arts. His instructions were completely subvert those people and make them irrelevant. They did. Nobody understood this. Nobody still understands this. It's very important. You should try to understand it. Besides practicing the Karma Mudra, which is fantastic. Your karma mudra practice is really going to benefit by opening the call to sack. It's going to be amazingly benefited by gazing. But if you practice Alexander technique with your dharma practice, you're going to blow the doors off of this vehicle, man. I'm telling you, you're going to it's going to be a rocket ship to enlightenment or some such something in the same ballpark. And you're gonna have fun, 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 and you're gonna help people. It's gonna be fantastic. Us Alexander people have the best damn time you can imagine. You just, you feel like we got the secret to the whole universe and they don't even, they just got a little piece of it, the Alexander people, but they think they got it all and they do got it all. Fuck. There's nothing they're lacking, really. But you put it all together. You put the Buddha Dharma, the Shambhala teachings, the Nyingma teachings, the Mahamudra, the Karma Mudra. It is unbelievably powerful. And you want to study all you got to do is really study Alexander Technique. But then if you study like Kyudo, oh my God, it's just beyond belief. Or if you study T-Ceremony, oh my God, it's beyond belief. If you really put your hand in the inkwell and you mix that stuff together and you do your calligraphy practice, your stroke practice, oh my God. If you do it right in such a way that you're opening shit up, most people do stroke practice and they just fucking try to get more frozen. Can I make myself more of a frozen meat sickle? No, that's not it. There's, there's an intensification, but you got it all wrong. And there's a flow that you have clueless about. There's, there's a place to be intense and there's a place to be relaxed and you don't have a clue but get one get a clue get a clue and you're like, oh, it'll change your life get a clue and it'll <laughs> blow the doors of that barn wide open <clears throat> and that's what Trump Ripsy was talking about man And that's just as important as the Shambhalatines, just as important as the Buddha Dharma. Westerners are, have a split in mind and body, which makes them need extra credit. You got to study this third leg for extra credit, or you're not going to progress normally like a Tibetan would, or like a Japanese person would, or like anybody from the or even anybody from Africa, or even anybody from lives on the land. It's not industrialized. It hadn't gone through a westernization process, which makes everybody dead. Gets rid of all the lunta, you know. That's the Christians, you know, want to kill all the lunta, but I don't know why, but anyway, they thought that was a good idea. They wanted to 
destroy all the people would love to. Look, that's gonna help everybody. I don't know. It didn't just ruined everything for everybody, but whatever. Can't blame the Christians. You know, it's just people that wanna control people. People that wanna control people. People that wanna control people. Communists. Communists weren't the Christians, but they had a similar plan. So I don't know. I guess I'm gonna have to read a little more about karma mudra. It's coming together. I'm gonna dig it out a little more. And Maha mudra. <laughs> <laughs> What's one to put first? Maybe we just gotta mix them up. Karma Mudra should come first, but we spent four or five hours talking about Karma Mudra already. <clears throat> Maybe we can't talk about it that much more. I don't know. We can. We can talk about love. And on both of these, Karma Mudra and Maha Mudra, it's about love. It's all about love. It's all about love. We don't know how to love. That's why we need this karma mudra, because it's teaching you to love. It's teaching you not to treat the other person as a... I say sometimes we treat the other person as a sex object, but but I just that's just a polarity, you know, male-female attracted to one another. But... Really, it's a oneness. Really, it's a oneness. You become one with your consort, with your authentic consort. This is all about, to me, it's all about having an authentic consort. People think that sounds bad. That don't sound good. Hey man, that is good. That's the best thing to be. To be an authentic consort oneself is the best thing you could possibly be. To have an authentic consort is the best possible thing to have. <clears throat> and you become one. And it's love. <laughs> you just become this one being of great love. That developed through passion somehow. Your passion was used as a vehicle to generate this big love atomic bomb. Not to what it is. <clears throat> That's what Mahamudra is, really. If it ain't that, it's the problem. If your Mahamudra practice does not go that way, then there's a little problem. We gotta go back to the previous intersection where we were introduced to bodhicitta practice and we got to double down on our bodhicitta practice or you can do it well, you can do it so well with a consort you just love your consort and, and beyond that you become one being with your consort you, you lose yourself you just become this Man, when you go down that rabbit hole together, you are impossible to separate you. It's impossible to, you go down that rabbit hole a hundred times together. And we're not talking about two buddies, we're talking about what has been joined together, what has become one. Uh, you know, my friend that I go through that with, well, I just regard as the same as me. I mean, there's no difference. We're in it together. <clears throat> 100%. Well, it's a great love to give everyone, to show to everyone, to be to everyone. To teach everyone how to do the same thing. <clears throat> <clears throat>